Shalom, I'm back in part two. All right. So, yeah, we're going to get into a few words here. All right. Uh, the way of the wicked is as darkness, and they know not at what they stumble. All right. I already told you, you know, why they stumble. Just like two thirds of Israelites, anybody that comes into this truth, they're stumbling at the word. And that stumble, that rock, that stone, that stumbling block, that's your Howard All right? So, anyway, let's uh, start here, give you some meanings behind the words here. All right? The wicked. Strong's H, 7563. Rasha, Rasha. See, wicked criminal. All right. He's a fugitive and a vagabond, going back to his forefather Cain. Again, people, this is all spiritual. Okay, you have to understand that the serpent in the garden was man, not a talking snake. All right, one of the sons of the wicked. Well, that spirit went into Cain. Okay? All right, and then from Cain. That spirit was placed into Esau after the flood. You understand? All right? See, so guilty one. One guilty of crime. You see that? And what is, when you're reading about Cain, right, Genesis, you know, what does it tell you? All that find me shall slay me. This is why this man ha has hidden himself throughout the centuries. Again, calling themselves the Greeks, calling themselves the Romans, calling themselves Europeans, further hiding themselves in 1681, calling themselves white. You understand? Because he's a criminal, he's a fugitive, he's a vagabond. All right? And vagabond doesn't mean a bum, people, it means a traveler. In other words, he never keeps it at home. Are you reading Habakkuk, the second chapter? All right? See? Wicked, hostile to the most high. You see that? You understand? He's against the most high. He opposes the most high in his son. All right? Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called the most high. All right? Who sitteth in the temple of the most high, showing himself that he is the most high. Who's a temple? The Israelites. We Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans that make up the 12 tribes of Israel. All right? We're the church. We're the congregation. We're the temple. Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Most High and that he dwelleth in you? He doesn't dwell in the churches. All right? Acts 17, Acts 748 and Acts 17, uh, 24 will both tell you the same thing. He does not dwell in in those temples built by hand. Temple, churches, synagogues, whatever the hell you want to call them. And as far as the Lord calls them, they're harlot houses. All right, pursuant to, uh, what is that, Jeremiah 5 and 7. All right? See, wicked, guilty of sin. See, he's a man of sin. As you read in Thessalonians 2 and 3, that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposed and exalted himself, and I just finished quoting that. And as you read further down, when you get to the 8th verse, yeah, the wicked, then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume. What does consume mean? To, to be destroyed, to be devoured. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Who's the spirit of his mouth? The prophets. Starting with our elders on down. All of us that make these videos, go out there and street teach. You understand? Right? You see, he's ungodly. He's profane. As you read about Esau. All right? In Hebrews. Right? What is that? 12 and 16? Right? Give me a minute. We're here because of the word ungodly, right? Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Right? To Jacob. Right? For he know that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. See that? 
And he was rejected. He was never going to get the blessing. All right. You can simply go, what is that? Genesis 27, uh, 37. And Isaac, uh, who actually, for those of you who can receive it, us in this truth, we know that is Yahushai, one of his uh, reincarnations. Okay? And he tells Esau, I have made thy brother Lord over thee and thy brethren. You understand that? He has to bow to us. It's part of the prophecy. Okay? You understand that? As well as the other nations. All right? For you know that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. And this man's been crying and taking out his vengeance on the children of Israel, the Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans all throughout history. As it tells you, uh, what is that? Uh, the Lord says we would be in uh, at war with Amalek from generation to generation. And Amalek is the head tribe of the Edomites, the international bankers, the international banking families. All right? All right, give me a minute. All right, let's look at this word darkness. We're going to get into that. All right. Strong's H653. Afela. Afela. Gloominess, calamity, wickedness. Again, and that's what Esau represents, people. All right. Give me darkness. See, very dark. Okay. See it right here? What does it say? Misfortune. Concealment. See that? That's what the darkness represents. And that's why this man, he set up these churches. Okay? He used religion. Okay? That man-made religious ideology, which had nothing to do with these scriptures. These scriptures condemn him. Okay? Expose him and condemns him. Okay? You understand that? If he knew that, these Bibles wouldn't have come you know, into our hands. They would have been destroyed. They never would have been printed. But what has this man done, right? You'll find the Bibles in your hotel rooms. You understand that? Okay? So, that's the deal. That's what darkness means. Concealment. And he hid himself where? In plain sight. He hid himself in plain sight. Esau was set up to conceal the truth from you. Okay? That's what he was set up to do by the Lord. That's why he is known throughout the scriptures, he is the devil. Okay? He's that dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. And devil is talking about man as well as Satan. All right? All right, give me a minute. All right, this is a stumble. All right. Strong's H, 3782. Cashel. Cashel. See, the stumble. You see that? Cause to stumble, bring injury to, ruin to, to overthrow. And that's what the Lord is coming back to do, right? Overthrow Esau, right? And he shall not meet thee as a man, right? Isaiah 47 and 3. Why? Because he's coming back as an angelic power. Right, and he's going to use the other nations to send that thermonuclear fire, the ICBMs, because that's the Lord's armory, right? Pursuant to what is that, Isaiah 54 and 16, right? I created the smith, right, who makes a weapon, right? And who's that weapon made for? For the Lord, okay? The waster 
to destroy. You understand, people? Do you get it? All right? All right, give me a minute. All right, people, this is to show you. All right, 1524, the letter J. Both I and the J were used interchangeably by the scribes to express the sound of both vowel and consonant. So, in other words, the letter J in 1524 replaced the letter I from the Greek text, okay, for the names Jehovah and Jesus, all right? In the Greek text, it started with the letter I, all right? But again, you have to go back to get the real names of the Heavenly Father and Son is in the Hebrew. So you got to go back to the Hebrew text. In the name of the Father is Yahweh, in the name of his son is Yahweh Shai. All right, so it wasn't until 1524 when Gion Giorgio Terracino, an Italian Renaissance, he was an Edomite grammarian known as the father of the letter J. There you go, people. So what are you going to tell me? All right? You're going to tell me that the man that was born over, you know, 2,000 years ago, 2,500 years ago, that his name didn't exist until 1524? Come on now. All right? You understand? So you have to go back to the Hebrew. There you go. All right. Give me a minute. All right, this is Revelation 20, again, to show you. All right, and I saw an angel come down from heaven. That angel would be Yahweh Shai, having the key to the bottom of his pit. The bottom of his pit is Europe, and a great chain in his hand. That's a spiritual chain, people. All right, and he laid hold of the dragon, all right, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. That's Esau Edom, the Edomites, the white man. All right, and bound him a thousand years. This is after that. Greco and Roman empires, you see? And cast him into the bottomless pit. He went into his caves, right? Mount Seir, all right? Known as Petra today, okay? The Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia, the word Caucasus, that's where you get the word Caucasian from. It means cave dweller, all right? And shut him up and set a seal upon him, see? That spiritual chain, that seal, that he should not, that he should deceive the nations no more. See? So he's your deceiver, okay? Till the thousand years should be fulfilled. See, it's just a fulfillment of prophecy why the Edomites come back into Paul for a third and final time. It's just to fulfill prophecy. And after that, he must be loose a little season. Well, right now, you're at the end of his little season, which started during the Renaissance. We jump to verse 7 and 8. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan, right, the dragon, right, which is the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, he shall be loosed out of his prison. That was during the Renaissance. We read about it in Malachi 1 and 4, which are in the four quarters of the earth. See? We'll be right back with part three. Shalom.